Hello everyone, my name is Mr Thorne, uh, I'm from Warminster School here in Wiltshire and I'm doing a video on state machines and the reason for this is I find that the overly simplistic explanation of state machines about traffic lights and so on can be quite confusing. There's not enough complexity in the state machine to show you what the actual purpose of doing it is. You look at the state, you look at the state machine for traffic lights and think, well, that's easy to code. Why would I bother drawing it out? So I thought I would do a real life example of a state machine. OK. So, and what we're going to do is a, a, a state machine for a game. It's for a little auto cannon uh, anti aircraft target thing that will track targets and shoot them. So essentially, in real terms, we do a state machine as a tool. It helps us um, decompose an issue, uh, helps decompose a problem that we then need to program. And once you've drawn your state diagram, it's much less brain power to actually turn that into code. If you don't do a state diagram beforehand, you will find that you will struggle to uh, actually program it in. You'll be thinking, well, hang on a minute, what happens when I'm here and this happens? But when you draw a state diagram, uh, you'll find that it's much easier to write it line by line, decompose the problem and, uh, and move forward to you know, a, a finished product. So let's have a look at what we've been tasked. So we've, we've got our instructions from our software development uh, masters up above us. And they have said, guys, I would like you to get the AI sorted out for a Gatling gun. For a flight simulator missile game we're working. It's got the following features. It's going to have the following features. It's going to have limited ammo, about 500 rounds or something. It's going to move randomly and smoothly while in search mode. It will target things within a range of 1,000 meters. And it has to turn to align the target smoothly. It has to spin up the, the Gatling gun barrel. So if we have a look at the uh, gun, I can't show you that actually. Uh, if we go back, you can see it's got these barrels on the gun. And we have to spin these up to an RPM before they start firing bullets out. And obviously when it's finished firing or the target's gone or whatever, it needs to spin them down. Um, when it's out of ammo, it will just sit idle and dead. It won't do anything. And we're only coding the state machine. OK, it's going to be called and processed by the game engine. They're going to say, guys, every 10 times a second, they're going to say, do something with the state machine. The guys upstairs are going to handle the animations, some of the maths functions that we need. We're just coding the state machine. OK, so we've been tasked with that. So the first thing to do um, is to define what the states are. So looking at this list of uh, features, we've got some states. We're going to be in a searching mode. We're going to be turning towards the target, you know, turning the guns to line up with the target, which we call tracking. We're going to be spinning up the barrels in a mode with spinning up. We're going to be firing bullets out of the gun, the guns, and then we're going to be spinning down, um, you know, when the target's out of range and so on. And there's also going to be this no ammo idle. So these are the these are the these are the different states. These are the six possible modes that our gun will ever be in. It won't be in fly around the screen mode. It will only be doing one of these. Okay. So we've defined what our states are. So we're going to write those down. We're going to put those in circles. Simple. Doesn't matter the order you put them in. But I've done them in the sort of thought about order of how it might operate: searching, tracking, spinning up, firing, spinning down, and obviously out of ammo. So we have our states drawn up here. We have them written down in circles. The next step is to think about the transitions. Okay. And here they are. So we're going to enter the mode when the gun comes into existence in the game. It's going to come in from here. It's going to it's going to enter this searching state. And this is what this little arrow here means. That's what it means. It means it means when you begin life, you begin life here and you begin life in the searching state. Now, there's only one way to get out of searching mode. There's only one way to get out of it. And that is if the range to a target is less than a thousand. If the range to a target is less than a thousand. We become in the tracking mode. We turn to tracking. OK, so that's it. We're now in the tracking mode and we need to think about the ways to get out of tracking mode. If the target goes out of range, if the range is larger than a thousand. We go back to searching. And remember, in tracking, we're turning the barrel smoothly to line up with the with the airplane or whatever it is. If the barrels are aligned with target, we then also leave that state. And when the barrels are aligned with target, we start spinning up our gun. So we're now in the spinning up state. So how can we get out of spinning up state? Well, there's two reasons we'll leave spinning up. Either the target's gone out of range, the target's dead, or the, the barrel speed of our gun, the barrels are spinning fast enough now, their RPM, their revolutions per minute, are larger than 500. So the barrels are spinning nice and quickly. Once the barrels are spinning quickly, we start firing bullets. And we're going to fire bullets, and we're going to sit here firing bullets forever until our ammo is zero, goes out of range, or the target's dead. Now you could say, great, let's just uh, let's go back to searching. Bang, back to searching. But that's not going to look very good in the game, and that's why the guys upstairs have said, do a spinning down animation as well. Make the barrels slow down, 
So we sit in this spinning down animation. And we're going to keep slowing those barrels down. Every time we call this function, we're going to say go a little bit slower until our RPM is zero. But there's two reasons. We, we may have entered this state because our ammo was zero. If our RPM is zero and our ammo is zero, we go to no ammo idle. And we'll come back to this one. But if our RPM is zero and we've still got ammo, then we go to searching. So when the gun stops spinning, we go to searching if we've got ammo. And if we don't have ammo, we go to this no ammo idle state. And you'll notice here this little looped over arrow. And that means you sit here forever. There's no ammo refills at the moment. Okay, very simple. We just sit here forever. The gun's basically useless. It's just going to sit here forever. Round, around, around. It can never leave this state. There's no way of it going anywhere else. Okay. So here we are over in coding. Now, it's not strict C Sharp or Java. It's more like a mix of pseudocode. Um, and as you can see, the first thing we need to do is to define our states in, in coding talk. And we've done that with something called an enumerator. Instead of having state being one, two, three, four, or five, we have said the states are searching, tracking, spinning up, spin down, firing, and the no ammo idle state. And we've also got a couple of variables to keep track of, the RPM of our barrel, which was set to zero when the, when the game starts, and that the ammo is set to 500. So there's our basic settings, okay? So let's go ahead and code our state machine. So first of all, we need to say what our state starts as, and our turret state, or my turret state, begins life in the searching state, okay? And here is our function that's going to, the game engine, so the other guys that write the part of the game, the big part of the game, are going to call us, to, to do some thinking every 100 milliseconds, for example. So they're going to call this function update my turret every 100 milliseconds. And they're going to do this for every turret that's in the game, but we're going to look at this one particular turret, for example. So what I've done here is straight away is I've brought in um, our turret state as a big switch case. And I've also um, defined some functions that are going to exist by the by the game developers that have written the game engine and we're going to set the target to get nearest target okay we don't need to worry about what this this code does it's just going to make a new object called target and it's going to fill it with the information of the nearest target okay so then we move into our, our main switch case here and you can see we've got we're going to switch our modes and what we're doing depending on the turret state and right now our turret state is in searching OK, so we're going to come into this code every 100 milliseconds. The game is going to call this function and we're going to come straight into here and go, ah, we're in searching mode. So it's going to execute the code here. If we're in the tracking code, it's going to execute the code here. If we're in the spin up mode, execute the code here and so on. OK, so we've already created all of our states. We don't have to think about this. We've simply copied it from our state diagram, searching, tracking, spinning up, firing down and idle. OK, so we haven't had to do too much thinking to do that. All right. So let's move on to our actual states. And I'm just going to show you one of the states here and we'll talk through them. So in the case of searching, there is only one way to get out of the searching. There's, there's a couple of ways to come into searching, but looking at the state diagram, there's only one way to get out of it. So when we're in searching, the only way we'll change state, and we're going to change state to tracking, is if the target's range is less than a thousand. Okay, so that's all we need to think about. Although this is complicated, decomposition again, we just got to think about that. And by drawing this diagram, we've made it very easy to go, look, I don't need to think about spinning up or any of this stuff. I just need to think about range. So let's have a look here and you can see if the range to target, again, these are just made up functions. If the range to target is less than a thousand, then change our state to tracking. And that's it, we've handled it. The loop's been called, it gets called 10 times a second, and we've handled it this time around. We've set our targets in range, and we've set our state to tracking. Okay, we're done here. The game carries on running, and when this guy gets called again, it's going to jump into the tracking state, because our state is tracking. The switch says, what's our state? We're in tracking, so it doesn't do this anymore. It goes straight into the tracking state. So it looks at this code, and we have said... Um, in our specification that when it's tracking, it's going to turn the barrels towards the gun a bit. So that's the actions we're going to take within tracking. We're going to turn the gun to face the target a little bit, because remember, it's called 10 times a second. So we're not going to just snap to the target. We're going to take a little step doop, 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 each time. To, so 10 times a second, we're going to move a little bit more towards the target. The only times we can leave the tracking state is if the range, the target goes out of range and becomes more than a thousand away in which case it goes to searching, or the barrels are aligned with the target, in which case we start spinning up. So let's have a look at that. 
So the rule one is if the range to target is larger than a thousand, if we go out of range, we go back to our searching state. So we set our state to searching, which means next time this is called in a, in a tenth of a second's time, we'll be in this mode again, ready to start looking for more targets. Okay. The other way we can get out of this state of, of, uh, of tracking is if the guns are aligned. And again, it's a made up function, but if the guns are aligned, if it comes back as true, then we go to spin up. And every time, 10 times a second, we're going to jump into this bit of code. It's going to execute the turn towards target a bit code. And that's going to be some animation code or whatever it might be that rotates our guns a bit towards the target. Okay, so 10 times a second is going dum 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 every time it comes in, 10 times a second, and it's going to keep executing this, turning towards the target a bit, checking if it's out of range, or checking if we're lined up. And in each case, it then performs another function, either going back to searching, or it goes on to spin up. So let's minimize this one down just to make it easy to see what we're doing. And let's look at the spin up code. So, spin up, spin up. If the range goes out, if it goes out of range, um, or the target, you know, crashes or dies some other way, then we need to spin down because our gun, our barrels have just started spinning. So we can't just go stop and go back to searching because that would look weird. The barrels will still be spinning or, or, or something strange. Um, so we need to actually spin them back down. OK, we need to slow them back down again before we start searching again. But if the RPM, if the barrel speed goes over 500 RPM, then we actually can start firing some bullets. So these are the two ways we can leave the spinning up mode. OK, we're never going to go back to tracking from spinning up. We're either going to be slowing down our gun and searching again, or we're going to be firing bullets. OK, so let's have a look at the code for this. And again, we're not thinking so much. So the functions in spinning up, well, the RPM of our gun needs to go a bit faster each time. Um, and the animators will be checking for the RPM of our gun and spinning our barrels around to make it look good. We're not too worried about that. We're just updating our RPM here and saying go a little bit faster, go 50 RPM quicker. So it's going to take 10 times a second. It's going to take a whole second to get up to speed. It's going to come round and round 10 times a second into this update my turret function. We're in the spin up mode. But if our RPM is now at 500, so the first time through it's 50, then it's at 100, then it's at 150 and so on. And if our RPM becomes larger than 500, we then change our state to firing. So we leave our spinning up state when our RPM is larger than 500. We've, we've done that code. We've written that software. OK, we haven't had to think about all of this. We've only had to think about this. And the other one we need to think about is if the range is out, if it's out of range or the target's dead. So if the range to target is larger than a thousand, and this, again, it's, it's just pseudocode typing really, or the target is dead, you know, it comes back as true, then the current state is spin down. It doesn't go searching because that would look silly, as I've said. It needs to go to the spin down mode. But let's have a look first of all at the firing state. So we'll minimize these, minimize spin up, we'll minimize searching, so don't need that up anymore. And let's look at the firing state. So, in the case that our state is firing, remember, 10 times a second. I do need to reiterate, this is called 10 times a second, okay? That's what makes it smooth. It's what the state machine is used for. Firing. So, 10 times a second, fire a bullet. Bang, bullet comes out of the gun, okay? And each time we fire a bullet, take our ammo down by one, obviously, okay? There's a bug there. Take our ammo down by one. Now then, when we're firing bullets, there's only one way to leave the firing state, and that is our ammo is zero, or our range is larger than a thousand, or our target is dead. And you could have done these as three separate arrows, but I've just put them together like this. So we need to do a check now for all three of these. And if any of these are true, we spin our barrel down. So let's have a look. If the ammo is zero, or the range target is, is out of range, bigger than a thousand, or our target is dead, then we set our state to spin down. Excellent. Easy, right? We're not having to think too hard about what we're coding. We're just coding one bit at a time. OK. So let's look at the spin down code. So the first, the function of spin down is to slow our RPM of our barrels down. We're not going to be firing any bullets or anything. Um, and it's going to be a bit slow to spin down. We've decided that. OK. But it's going to sit here spinning down. And there's a couple of cases for leaving this state. There's a couple of reasons we will leave this state. There's, there's these inputs feeding us in. We've done these. And there's a couple of reasons why we might leave this state. OK, first of all, if we're out of ammo and the guns have stopped spinning, then we go here. If we if our guns have stopped spinning, so our barrels have stopped rotating, but we've still got ammo left, then we go up to searching. So let's have a look at this. So each time we come into this little pass, so 10 times a second we're coming in, 
we're going to take some RPM off. And again, the animators will be looking at this RPM variable and making the gun spin slower. They're looking at the RPM and going, oh, he's only at 100 RPM now, so spin it slower. We don't worry about that. But what we will do is we'll check. So if the RPM is zero, so our barrels have stopped spinning, and our ammo is zero, then we're going to move to that no ammo idle state. Okay. Otherwise, the guns are stopped spinning, but we've got some ammo. We're going to go back to our searching state. So you can see how we've implemented this here. And we go back to our searching state. Okay. And remember, this just takes us straight back up to here. So then the next time this is called in a tenth of a second's time, it's just going to be checking, is there a target? And if there's no target, nothing happens. It just doesn't do anything. It just waits again till it's called again, constantly checking for targets. However, if it's set to the no ammo, no ammo idle state, which is this recursive state, it just sits here forever. Okay, it's like an end state. It doesn't go anywhere. It can get, can't get out of it, which is what this arrow signifies. And we have a look here. Nothing happens. So if this is called... And our state is no ammo idle, as set by this guy. It comes down here, doesn't do anything, and carries on with the program. So it just sits here forever. Okay. So that is, in essence, a state machine. And I think the takeaway really is for state machines. And as I say, I remember when I was learning about state machines, I thought, well, this is really simple when I'm doing traffic lights or clicky pens. What's the point? Okay. And... The point that I use a state machine for in, in real life software engineering is to is to abstract our problem, get our problem down on paper, simplify, decompose the issue into its various steps, and it makes implementation, as I've just demonstrated, a lot simple. I was not worried about the RPM of the barrels in tracking. When I write my code, I know if I'm in the tracking state, my barrels aren't spinning, because the only way they can spin up is if it's put into the spin up state, and it can never be in the tracking state unless it's gone through the searching state. And it can't be in the searching state unless the barrel has spun down. Now, even saying that was complicated and I had to stop and think. But looking at this diagram, it's a lot easier to see. OK, so that is the reason we use the state diagram. That is the reason um, we would use it when we're designing something complicated. And, you know, systems are much more complicated than this. AI systems in games are a lot more complicated. And you could hand this over to the animation guys and say, guys, I need a searching animation. I need one for tracking. I need one for spinning the barrels. I need one for firing. You know, you, you've encapsulated quite a lot of things, for example, in game development in just one simple diagram. OK. OK, so I hope that's been useful. Um, it, it's definitely a way of thinking about things and doing things, as I say, a lot easier. Um, you would be expected uh, in your exam, for, for a, certainly for A-level, to be able to draw a state diagram, usually for something a lot simpler. Um, and the important thing is to, is to note we are looking at states and the reasons to move between them, the transition logic, the, the reasons to move between them. OK, but the gun can only exist in this example in certain states. All right. Uh, we have our entry point for our system. We have an end state here. It just sits here forever. And we have our transition lines as well. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Cheers.